What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So this is gonna be a really, really easy review. Matter of fact, some of you guys might get upset that this doesn't run into 20 minutes plus because I don't think this is gonna be that long because this is so easy. Listen to me, okay, listen. Are you listening, are you with me? If you're looking for the best integrated amplifier, as far as sound quality is concerned, for under $2,000, it is Kinky Studio's new Choco Ime integrated amplifier. It's just that simple. But we're gonna do this review the same way we always do, so don't worry about it. We're gonna throw those main specs on screen so you guys can check that out. I'm gonna tell you about some standout features that I thought were cool. I'll tell you what the amp sounds like, how it compares to some other amps. Uh, I'll tell you about some speaker pairings I did, and then we'll wrap up the video. And of course, if I have any complaints, I'll make sure to touch on those also. So that was a pretty bold statement I just opened with. Best amplifier you can buy for under $2,000 if sound quality is your top concern. A am I exaggerating? Am I overhyping this? No, no I'm not. This is a purist piece and this is gonna be the first standout feature. For those of you that don't know, amplifiers can fall into a lot of different categories but for this specific topic, the two categories I'm gonna to refer to are full featured amplifiers and purist pieces. The Kinky Studios new Choco Sound Ime is a purist piece. And what that means is every single dollar you spend and every single dollar they spend manufacturing it goes towards getting the best parts humanly possible so it could sound as good as possible. That means there's no internal phono stage, there's no DAC, there's no tone controls, there's no balance controls, none of that. You get your two inputs, you get your speaker terminal outputs, you get a remote control, nice OLED screen up front, and that's it. This is a purest piece, guys. Now, I can already tell some of you guys are like, Nemo didn't say it had subwoofer outputs. Does it have subwoofer outputs? Believe it or not, it doesn't. And for many years, I said I would never review an amplifier that didn't have subwoofer outputs. Not only am I reviewing one, I'm telling you it's the best thing you can buy under $2,000. And that's because I found a solution for that. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Don't you worry, for less than $20, you can add subwoofer outputs to any amp. And I'm actually gonna do a whole separate video on that. Uh, ARC also for that matter, and I'll cover those topics later. Back to the amp. Another standout feature is gonna be the insane build quality. Do you guys see how thick this top plate is? That, that theme is carried, carried out through the entire chassis. This thing is built like an absolute tank. That's one thing I love about Kinky Studio. I own their EXP7 preamp and their EXP7 monoblocks. I've owned them for like four years now. And one of the reasons I bought that preamp and monoblock setup was because the EXM1 had been getting rave reviews. I saw the build quality. I saw the internal layout and how seriously they took this stuff. And I was blown away. I, was, I might have been one of the first people in America to have the EXP7 and EXP7 monoblock combo. I don't know. Um, but at the time I had it, there wasn't a single review out on it. Everyone was buying the EXM1. Anyhow, I digress. Uh, another standout feature uh, I think is the price. It's under 1700 bucks as of me filming this video. Um, to get casework like this, even above $2,000 would be impressive. And the fact that we're getting it for under $1,700, my hat is absolutely off to Kinky Studio or Choco Sound as the brand of this amplifier is. I believe what they're doing is I think Kinky Studio is their main amplifier company. And I think what they're trying to do is set up a second brand, Choco Sound, that's gonna go for a different sound. Because those of you guys that don't know, the Kinky Studio sound, right, which is like my preamp, my monoblocks, or their EXM1 integrated amplifier, it's all about fast, detailed, uh, you know, really good detail retrieval, dynamics. It's just a great sound that is going to be mostly neutral, a little bit cool in the mid range, things like that. And whereas with the Choco Sound brand, they want to take things in a warmer direction, and they've accomplished it in a way I really, really like. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me tell you if there, if there are any other standout features. Um, OLED screen, super cool. I love the way it functions. It is never too bright. Um, even on its brightest setting, you can read it very easily from across the room if you wanna adjust your volume or change your inputs. And, and it's never overbearing. That's the awesome thing about OLED. It's very easy on the eyes. You can dim the screen also to the point that you can't even see it. And when you turn it off, it's actually off right now. It still says Choco sound for a little while. And I think that's super cool. It does eventually turn off all the way where you don't even see that. Oh, you know what? There is one other cool feature. That top window cutout we see, that is such a cool aesthetic stylized choice. 
and I'm happy that they, they did that. It just gives the amplifier some flavor. And um, before I move on to the listening impressions and I tell you what it sounds like, I wanna make one thing absolutely crystal clear. This unit looks great in pictures, but pictures do not do this thing justice. This is an impeccably beautiful piece in person. I don't know if you're supposed to put those two words together. That felt kind of weird. Those were, those were big words. I don't usually use big words like that. I'm sorry, guys. Let me make it sound more simple. This thing looks killer in person and you got to set your eyes on it. I'm telling you. Wow. Okay. So what the heck does it sound like? Cause look, I'm telling you, it's amazing. I'm telling you, it's got great build quality. They're using high end components on the inside and you know what I mean? But what does it sound like? So we got a top end. Okay. It's not going to be dark and rolled off, nor is it going to be bright forward or energetic, mostly neutral. Okay. Some, some might say it's warm. I, I don't think it is because it's actually very resolving in the top end. I'm going to call the treble neutral, highly resolving, easy on the ears. And it didn't matter what speakers I paired with it. I paired everything, you know, I'm getting ahead of myself again. I'll tell you about speaker pairing after listening impressions. So top end, easy on the ears, yet highly resolving, treble quantity, mostly neutral. Moving down to the mid-range, this is where things change a lot from Kinky Studio, because the Kinky Studio sound also has a treble region that is easy on the ears, highly resolving and such, right? Very uh, uh, refined, sorry, a lot of refinement. Uh, that's something Kinky Studio brings to the table, and they were able to do the same thing with the e -May. Now, the mid-range is where the two brands really start to become different. Where the Kinky Studio sound is a little bit lean, cool, analytical, yet very open and expansive and highly detailed in that mid-range, the Choco Sound e -May is going to be a little bit warmer, a little bit tonally richer. I mean, by direct comparison, it's kind of a big difference, but in the grand scheme of things, this is not like the warmest amplifier in the world. It's not so warm sounding that you feel like you're inside of an acoustic guitar. I've heard systems like that. Personally, I hate that. I think it sounds so artificial, so fake, and it crushes a ton of detail when amps get that warm. This is like just, just a few notches warm you know, just the right amount of warm, warm enough to give male singers some body to their voice, uh, you know, warm enough to give female vocalists that are breathy, a, a little bit of like realism and weight to that. Um, you know, it's still going to be expansive. It's still going to be open. It's still going to be detailed in that mid range, which is something I love. Cause again, when amps get too warm in the mid range, they start to crush detail. The Choco e doesn't do that. Kinky studio was able to really strike a nice balance with pushing it to the warm side, but not to the point where it starts to crush detail. So hats off very, very good mid range. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to tell you about the mid range. Look, I'll tell you this about the mid range. I, and Honestly, the, just the voicing from top to bottom, I think it's voicing just about anyone would like. I can't imagine someone listening to this amplifier and not liking something about the way it sounds because everything it does is balanced so nicely that it, it's, I, I love it. I think it's voiced perfectly, okay? I, I'll go, I'll say that, I'll, I'll take it that far. I'll call it perfectly voiced. Maybe that's to my taste, right? But. It's my review, right? So let's talk about the bass. There's no mid bass bump. Thank God for that. You guys know I hate it when an amplifier or speakers or subwoofers have a mid bass bump. It makes the product sound cheap. Uh, no one wants that, right? Uh, the bass we do get is very linear, very well controlled. This bad boy has a very good amount of power, well north of 130 watts per channel at eight ohms. It can control the driver of any speaker beautifully. Um, bass is confident, bass is strong. Um, I wouldn't call it exaggerated by any stretch, but it's strong, it's confident, it's well controlled, uh, very good note to note distinction, high quality bass, high quality bass all the way up to treble. Um, the voicing, again, fantastic, I loved it. Let's talk about the power real quick. 130 watts per channel. Might not sound like a lot, it's a lot, guys. Keep in mind, I've reviewed amps on this channel with like 50 watts, a chan uh, reviewed amplifiers that only had like 50 watts before, and I've told you that was plenty of power. Trust me, 130, I think it's 138 watts a channel into eight ohms. That's a ton of power from something that is this size. I'll, I'll tell you what, it's a ton of power for even something that's full size, guys. Um, the four ohm specs aren't published. Some of you guys are gonna ask questions about that, so let me answer it now. If you guys pay attention, most of the higher end amplifier companies have stopped publishing four ohm specs. This happened a few years ago. Um, Kinky Studio, Hegel, even Goldman 
You know, they got amplifiers that are like 20 grand. No forum spec. Why is that? I've talked to a few of these amplifier companies and it's just this simple. The four ohm spec has been exaggerated by so many companies in the affordable space reporting doublings of wattage at four ohms compared to eight ohms, which is just absolutely asinine. It's not true, guys. It is, listen, aside from car audio, you're unlikely to find a home audio amplifier that's gonna double into four ohms. It's just insane. Unfortunately, because so many of the budget brands report doubling into four ohms, uh, the high end companies are like, if I don't say that people are going to think my amplifier is not good. Right. But at the same time, I don't want to lie to the customer. You know what? We're just not going to publish a forum spec. We don't want to play the game. That's what it comes down to. And if you look even on some of their websites, like kinky studio, I don't know if it still says it in one part of their website, they, they say something about wattage. I'm paraphrasing of course, but it's something like, uh, they say how much power the amplifier has. And they say, of course, the, amp the amplifier is capable of a lot more, uh, but we trust that you are the smart consumer and will not uh, want to play the Watts game, right? And I knew exactly what they meant when they said that, because I've talked to a lot of amplifier companies that are sick and tired of seeing these fake forum figures. Um, enough of that. But you know what, let me tell you real quick uh, how, how some companies are kind of boosting their forum specs. So, uh, you know, this amp, 138 Watts, uh, at eight ohms times two, right? That's gonna be 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, wide band power. What a lot of companies do to show forum specs doubling is they rate that forum spec at like one or two kilohertz, which is not cool, but so many companies do it. I, f I guess it's like a monkey see monkey do thing. Anyways, Kinky Studio, Choco Sound, they're not playing that game. You don't get a forum spec, but trust me guys, the amp has plenty of power. 138 watts at eight ohms should already tell you, you don't have to worry about wattage or current. Um, let me tell you what speakers I used. I used all kinds of speakers and I'll go as far as to say, I don't care what speakers you have. The amplifier is going to sound fantastic with your speakers. Cause I tried everything from dark and warm speakers to bright speakers, to neutral speakers, uh, easy to drive speakers, hard to drive speakers. You name it. I tried it. Speakers with lots of bass, speakers with little, little bass, dark speakers, bright speakers, everything sounded fantastic from the very affordable Heco Aurora 300s that are just 400 bucks a pair uh, to something more expensive like the uh, with the Arendelle 1723 uh, bookshelves. I have those here review coming soon. I tried my Bucard S400 Mark IIs, of course. I tried, of course, my hardest, uh, the speakers that are the hardest to drive that I have, the CSS Crichton 1 TDs. I hope no one feels like I'm taking a jab at CSS. I love CSS. And the Crichton 1 TDs are insanely good for how affordable they are, but those mothers are hard to drive, very hard to drive. Kinky Studio, you may, uh, no problem, no problem. It can drive them, no problem. Um, everything I threw at it, it could drive, absolutely no problem. I even uh, threw more expensive gear at it, like the uh, Monacoustics Platamons, those are $6,500 a pair. Um, I used my, my Focal Cantas, of course, at, uh, what are those, 8,000 a pair. I tried the Franco Serblin Accordos at $15,000 a pair. The Choco Sound e was not out of its element, guys. This amp's a performer. So, uh, I've shown you the specs. I've told you what it sounds like. I told you the standout features. I've told you about speaker pairing I did. Um, let me tell you about what I didn't like. There's just one thing I didn't like. Only one thing. I felt like the remote control could have been a little bit nicer. It's perfectly serviceable and it works just fine. But I did email Kinky Studio and I was like, hey, the build quality of the amplifier is so amazing. I suggest you offer an alternative remote for those of us that are willing to pay a little bit more. And they emailed me back and they said, actually, we do. So if there's anyone who, you know, they don't want a, a kind of a universal looking remote, and they want something a little higher end, they do have it available. You just have to email them and chat with them about it. And I get it. They were trying to hit a price point. Um, you know what I mean? They were come, trying to come in under 1700 bucks and they knocked it out of the park. So a little complaint about the remote, not really a big deal. Let's see, what else do we wanna talk about? Um, oh, let me tell you about how I added subwoofer outputs to this thing for less than $20 and how I added HDMI ARC to this thing for less than $20. Cause look, I watch TV down here also. Um, I run a lot of subwoofers. Of course I have my RHEL subwoofers that have high level inputs, I use those. But I wanted to try some of my other subwoofers with the Choco and you know, a lot of my other subwoofers don't have high level inputs and this doesn't have pre-outs or subwoofer outputs so I had to find a solution. 
Being a car audio guy, of course, I knew about this thing called line level converters. I always had a theory that you could use them in a home audio system, but I'd never tried it. So I said, you know what? I'm going to try it. I ordered a Skosh unit off of Amazon. I'll throw a picture right here so you guys can check that out. Um, and, and I want to say it was like 18 bucks. And what it essentially does is it, it converts the high level speaker terminals to RCA output, which is low level and allows you to just go RCA into your subwoofer. Less than 20 bucks, super easy to use. I've got it on the amplifier right now. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna make a whole video about that because I think there's a lot of guys with like vintage systems or purist pieces that might not have subwoofer outputs and you're like, oh God, I want, you know, do I have to upgrade or is there an easier solution? There is, I just told you. Second thing, like I said, I like to watch TV down here and I like to use one remote control if possible at all. Now, I could have definitely run optical from my TV into my DAC but then like, how am I gonna control volume? My DAC doesn't have remote control. I guess I could use the remote control for the Choco sound, but now I'm dual wielding two remote controls. I didn't wanna do that. Um, after I reviewed those um, SVS Prime satellites, I fell in love with HDMI ARC. And again, for less than $20, you could buy a thing called an HDMI ARC extractor. I'll throw a picture of it on screen. I'll put links to this stuff below. You can search Amazon, you'll find them. I don't use affiliate links, so the links I'm including, they're just the ones I bought that I know work. Um, you don't have to use those links because again, they're not affiliate links. I don't care if you use them or not. I'm just putting them down there to help you guys. Um, but yeah, this HDMI uh, audio, uh, HDMI ARC audio extractor, super simple to use. You just go HDMI ARC off your TV into this little box. And then that little box gives you two RCA outs that you can connect to one of the inputs on the amplifier. And now your TV remote controls volume uh, when you're watching TV, absolutely fantastic. So, um, cause you know, other, otherwise, you know, I, I review a lot of subwoofers. If I can't connect a subwoofer to an amplifier that I, like any subwoofer I want, I'm gonna be frustrated. So um, I'm happy that that worked just flawlessly. Um, look, badass unit, very reasonably priced. Let's do some quick comparisons and we'll wrap up the video. So at 1800 bucks, let's first start with something more affordable like the Emotiva TA2. That's a fantastic amplifier at a thousand bucks. It's got a ton of features that the Choco doesn't have, but the Choco is a purest piece. It's not about features, it's about sound quality. How does the sound quality compare? Uh, it doesn't. The Choco Sound Emay's sound quality is absolutely on another level. The treble quality compared to the Emotiva is so much more refining. It, it's, it doesn't even make sense to do a comparison. Like it just, it doesn't make sense. It's on another level. The mid range is, has so much more realism to it. Um, the Emotiva is very good with bass. I'll be honest, the Emotiva TA2 has got good power, um, but a little bit more texture with the Choco. Um, the Choco is, uh, and I get this question sometimes when something's more expensive, they're like, it's double the price. Is it twice as good? Yeah, it's twice as good. Yeah, it, it's maybe three times as good, honestly, in terms of sound quality. And, and that's rare. That's generally not the case. Usually when you spend double, triple, you don't get double, triple performance. But the Choco is punching so above its weight, I can actually say that. Let's compare it to something that's closer to its price, the Bucard Audio i150. That's $2,500 or $2,000 if you're an existing Bucard customer. Again, that's a full-featured integrated amplifier. It's got a ton of features that the Choco doesn't have. But if we're talking about sound quality only, Again, the Choco Sound EMA blows it out of the water. It's far more refined in the top end. It's far more realistic in the mid range. Um, the sense of depth to it, um, what it can do with the human voices, all of it is just so much better. Um, let's talk about something more expensive. I mean, what, what is it really on par with? You wanna know the truth? It's more on par with something that's like $4,000 and up. It's more on par with something like the Thomson Stereo Galleon. It's more on par with something like the Hagel H190. It's more on par with something like my $6,000 preamp and monoblock setup, honestly. It's closer to those products than it is to anything in its price range. That's how good it is. That's how much I like it. So that's my review. I don't think I could be any more glowing I don't think I could be any more clear on how good this amp is. So I, th I hope you heard me. If you got any questions, ask in the comments section below. This YouTube channel does have a free Discord. Uh, if I left anything out, feel free to ask me. I'll do my best to clarify it. Yeah, that's the review, guys. Until next time, later.